Take your Bibles and turn to the book of James chapter 4. Um, <clears throat> I've heard this word already used tonight. Um, I want to challenge you. This is already, it's already been said, this is a time of, uh, of reflection over the year. And as already been mentioned by Brother Ron, it's, it's a, also, you, we got to think about the hope of what we have. Uh, don't you believe that God's blessed us this past year? Don't you think the Bible says that God never changes? So don't you think He wants to bless us this year, coming year? Well, I believe He does. But if you were listening a while ago, there was a condition for the nation of Israel. I don't think that changes. I believe there's a condition for us. Uh, as we approach a new year, I want us to ponder something tonight. Uh, let's take an inventory and maybe review what's led us up to today. Uh, and I want us to ask a question. I want you to answer this question in your own heart and mind. Does my life matter for God? Now, I didn't ask the question, I know my life matters to God. That's not what I asked. Does it matter for God? It should. It should. The Bible says in Psalm 90 and verse 9, we spend our years as a tale that is told very first time I ever read that in the Bible. That, that seemed to be such a, a poetic description of something. Our life is a tale that is told. And what's being told about you? Is, does your life matter for God? Uh, what's my story? <laughs> uh, what's the tale? Uh, is, is, is it a story of eternal spiritual value or a temporal waste of time? Is it a story of faith or is it a story of just frivolous activity? Is it a story that brings glory to God or is it one that just draws attention to me? What's my story? What's the tale that's being told? In James chapter 4, in verse 14, as I was thinking about this, it says, Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. I was thinking about this, and I, I just wonder what happened. I'm, uh, at 68, most of my life here is over. But it went by so quickly. Uh, I felt like I, only, I graduated from high school yesterday. And my graduating class just had their 50th reunion. But it seems like just yesterday. What happened? It passed by so quickly. Uh, there are times when it seems like only yesterday I proposed to Nancy. And now we've been married 41 years. And lived in three different states. Have three children, four grandchildren. It doesn't seem possible I have a, a boy that's almost 40 years old. What happened? It just, a vapor. It just seems to have passed by so quickly. I'm a teenager still in my brain. I really am. Just a few days ago, I was a long-haired kid playing drums. Seemed like just yesterday. I remember the days in the past of working from sun up to sundown and then getting up the next day and the next day and the next day and just doing it all over again. And now if I do that, it takes me a week to recuperate. <laughs> Something happened, and it happened so quickly. Now, let me get, make this clear. I'm not complaining. Because God has blessed me greatly with good health. I've just gotten older. But it happened. 
so fast. My life's been a vapor. And I can't go back and redo what's already happened. But what about the new year? What about 2024? What's the tale that's going to be told about me in this coming year? And what's the tale that will be told about you? Are they going to say that your life mattered for God in this coming year? The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 16 that we should redeem the time. <clears throat> We've already been told it's not going to last very long. It's just a vapor. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 5, we're admonished to make full proof of thy ministry. Yep. Getting it done must be done. Why? Because time's running out. It's quick. It goes by. Let us not be hearers only, the Bible says, but doers also. Right. I was thinking about this while the preaching was going on earlier, and I, I, I'm... Uh, Brother Phil was talking about he was writing stuff down. I'm, I'm constantly writing stuff down. On a napkin, on my hand, or somewhere. I mean, just where I, I find it at the time. But don't be guilty in 2024 of just phoning it in. We can do that. And, and, and it might be the easiest thing we do is just phoning it in. You can come to church. You say, well, I, I've come to church. Yeah, but you can come to church and phone it in. Right. Right. And if you phone it in, your life's not mattering for God. Amen. I'm going to do something that's very rare for me. I'm going to be brief. <clears throat> Brother Josh said, if you haven't been here on Wednesday night, you ought to know by now, brief is not my thing. All right? But I was thinking about an example. I'm just going to give you this example. Uh, I, I like history. Uh, and what history, the reason history appeals to me is because I look at it from this standpoint. I want to see what people did in the situation they found themselves in. Some were cowards. Some were heroes. Some did amazing things, and some failed miserably. But I like to study that. I like to, I like to look at that. So I want to look at somebody tonight from history. I'm going to do something just, like I say, it's a little odd for me. I'm just going to read some quotes from him to you. And then I'm going to read something to you that he wrote that has stood the test of time. And I want you to consider it when we're thinking about this question, will my life matter for God? <clears throat> the China Inland Mission was a missionary outreach founded in England by Hudson Taylor in 1865. 1865 was about the time of the end of the American Civil War. One of the missionaries that was a part of that outreach was a man by the name of C.T. Studd. During the course of his life, C.T. Studd served as a missionary in China, in India, and Africa. He was a devoted, dedicated man. Here's some of the quotes that I found from him. If Jesus Christ be God and died for me, then no sacrifice can be too great for me to make for Him. Amen. Well, what does the Lord want you to do? It could never be too much because He's done so much more for us. If that is your attitude, you'll have a life that matters for God. He said, let us not glide through this world and then slip quietly into heaven without having uh, blown the trumpet loud and long for our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Let us see to it that the devil 
will hold a thanksgiving service in hell when he gets the news of our departure from the field of battle. I don't know too many people that want to challenge the devil. C.T. Studd said, I want the devil to know my name and know who I represent and know who I live for. And I want him to know that my life is mattering for God. That's what he was saying. He said, I realized that my life was to be one of simple, childlike faith. And that my part, listen to this, was to trust, not to do. I was to trust him, and he would work in me to do his good pleasure. From that time, when I learned that, he said, my life was different. If you're trying to do, you'll phone it in. If he's doing it through you, it has eternal spiritual value. He knew that. Sometimes I feel, he said, that my cross is heavy beyond endurance. You ever felt overwhelmed, overloaded? C.T. Studd felt the same way. He said, My heart seems worn out and bruised beyond repair, and in my deep loneliness I often wish to be gone. <laughs> but God knows best, and I want to do every ounce of work He wants me to do. Amen. I want my life to matter for God. <clears throat> Boy, when I read this, I said, Oh, my. Boy, you just, you just read my mail. He said, funds are low again. Hallelujah. I sure am glad that wasn't the end of that sentence because I couldn't get that. You know, this is what he said. That means God trusts us and is willing to leave his reputation in our hands. A life that matters for God. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. When you live by faith, sometimes the funds are low again. Hallelujah. I found this to be the case. I've seen it happen. <clears throat> Some of the godliest people I know went through the most difficulty. Because God could trust them with it that it would bring honor and glory to him in that difficulty. When I first read this, I said, boy, I've got to really think about that. He said, prayer is good, but when used as a substitute for obedience, it's nothing but a blatant hypocrisy. That God wants you to pray and God wants you to put feet on your prayers. Christ wants not nibblers of the possible, but grabbers of the impossible. Now, C.T. Studd lived in the late 1880s. And when I read this, I said, no, he must have lived today. He said, how little chance the Holy Ghost has nowadays. The churches and missionary societies have so bound him in red tape that they practically ask him to sit in a corner while they do the work themselves. A life that matters for God. He said, had I cared for the comments of people, I should have never been a missionary. If you listen to the skeptics and the naysayers, you'll never do anything. He said, if I'd listened to all that advice, I'd have never done anything for God. But he said, I want my life to matter for God. Real Christians, he said, revel in desperate ventures for Christ. Expecting from God great things and attempting the same with exhilaration. 
So he said, My only joys, therefore, are that when God has given me a work to do, I have not refused it. Amen. Whatever it is. And when it seems a mountain too big, he says, just trust him. He can take care of the mountain. C.T. Studd was used by God to see many people come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ as Savior. He dedicated his life to that endeavor. His life was a tale that was told. And it tells the story of a man whose life mattered for God. In his sojourn here, he also wrote a poem. That in that poem is the most quoted thing he ever said. It summarizes the point I, I want to get across tonight, and that is our desire should be that our life matters for God. I look back, and I'm probably my own worst critic. I, I look at Sometimes I look at what I've learned, and I'm thankful for that, but then I look at what I should know and don't know. And I look at, it, maybe this was done or that was done, and, and, and glory to God that that happened, but then I look at so much that could have been done that wasn't. And tonight, I'm reminded that my life is a vapor. And most of it here is already gone. But what about 2024? <clears throat> this was the poem he wrote. I want you to listen to it very carefully. He said, Two little lines I heard one day, traveling along life's busy way, bringing conviction to my heart, and from my mind would not depart. Only one life will soon be passed only what's done for Christ will last only one life yes only one soon will its fleeting hours be done then in that day my Lord to meet and stand before his judgment seat only one life will soon be passed only what's done for Christ will last only one life, the still small voice, gently pleads for a better choice, bidding me selfish aims to leave and to God's holy will to cleave. For there's only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Only one life, a few brief years, each with its burdens, hopes, and fears. Each with its days I must fulfill, either living for self or in His will. Only one life, which will soon be passed, only what's done for Christ will last. When this bright world would tempt me sore, when Satan would a victory score, when self would seek to have its way, then help me, Lord, with joy to say, only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Give me, Father, a purpose deep in joy or sorrow thy word to keep. Faithful and true whate'er the strife pleasing thee in my daily life. For there's only one life to will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Oh, let my love with fervor burn, and from the world now let me turn, living for thee and thee alone, bringing thee pleasure on thy throne. For only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Now listen to this last phrase. Only one life. Yes, only one. Now let me say, thy will be done. And when at last I'll hear the cry, I know I'll say, 
was worth it all. It was worth it all. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Um, resolutions have become a part of New Year tradition. I think this would be one worth making and keeping. That 2024 would be a year that my life would matter for God. Whatever the failures of the past, whatever the victories of the past, that 2024 would be a life that would matter for God. For you see, you and I only have one life. And it will soon be passed. And only what's done for Christ will last. What are the things that matter most to us? What are the things that occupy our time? That get our attention? That make it high up on our priority list? What are those things? I only have one life to live and that's all I have let it be for God let it matter for Him let it be that it makes a difference <clears throat> I said this past Wednesday when I was preaching a funeral I said someone if you're saved someone told you about Jesus be that someone to someone else. Aren't you glad they told you? They'll be glad you told them. Make that life count for God this year. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.